That's the sound you're supposed to make when you have new mics. We might just uh, change our profession and go into sexy talking. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm so excited about this Christmas season. (laughs) Welcome back to Stuck with Kadem and Kadis. We know that it's been a while. We've been on a hiatus, or you could say a hiatus. So we haven't been recording, and clearly, this is why, we got new microphones. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave Reiser at Rock Hard Studios for suggesting these mics for us. Inexpensive and also high quality. These mic stands were also gifted to us Mm -hmm. from Dave Reiser. Our little Christmas gift to us. So now we look more official. We ain't fucking around anymore, guys. And also, we noticed that this fucking thing, we had the camera like higher up and looking down at us so this never looked like it was fucking floating that's not what it's intended to look like it's intended to look like it's floating yeah we spent like 70 bucks on this shit and it's like it just looked like something was spinning on the table so you kind of get the effect now now you see why we spent that money on that Mm -hmm. Ah. you could also see that we switched seats and that is because i thought about how weird it was that the show is called Katum and Katus, and people read from left to right, so only appropriate. Okay, let's get into the show. Yeah. Indulge in festivities. Christmas trees. The word you've never heard. Ooh. Ooh. What was that word? My word is Hagamadog. I think I'm saying that right. So Hagamadog is when you roll a snowball big enough to create a massive one, like when building a snowman. So it's- this is a snowball. Put it on the ground, start rolling it. Still it is snowball. In the still process. S- yeah, still snowballing. I don't know when. What's the threshold? Yes, between a snowball and a hagama dog. It's I mean, probably once you go, holy hagama dog. <laughs> once the snow starts really falling, get yourself out there and uh, you know roll some hagama dogs. My word of the day is a yule hole. Mm. And it's not the hole you're thinking about, you mm-hmm. little slut. You little slut. <laughs> a Yule hole is the loosest notch on your belt that you'd shift to after having a big Christmas dinner. Ah, so Santa Claus has it's a lot you know. of Yule holes to, yep. you know, unbuckle. You go like this. Ugh, switching the old Yule hole. <laughs> Hopefully everyone gets stuffed this uh, beautiful Christmas season. Hope uh, Yule Holes are also stuffed. Did you know? No way. I wonder if the mic is capturing my stomach noises. I'm like, (laughs) It is a tradition in Japan for people to eat KFC on Christmas Day. Orders must be placed two months in advance. (laughs) I guess the Japanese because they don't celebrate Christmas as an official holiday. They're thinking, we're doing what Americans do. Oh, because it's a Western It's holiday. a Westernized holiday, so and KFC. They celebrate it eating Westernized food. Yeah, I believe so. I don't know if that's the case, but I'm going to assume so, yeah. It could also be because they got confused and thought Colonel Sanders was Santa Claus. <laughs> Colonel Santa Claus. This Christmas season, if you're looking to save some money, you could do the old-fashioned Japanese tradition of getting yourself some KFC this season. Mm, Get some drumsticks for the drummer boys. Mm, We're we're on a good roll today. A good hagama dog. Oh, (laughs) rolling a nice one. Oh, speaking of rolling. Yeah, I was just about to say. (laughs) This is Fibonacci, by the way. That's the name of my water Uh, uh, pipe. uh, uh, uh. We can't talk about that. JT would be very disappointed in us. Oh, yes. <laughs> Our producer. Oh, d- did you put two facts? Remember, I told you we we're going to do two no. facts. You... Oh, two facts. You're right. And... You're right. Oh. So we're doing two because we figured the dad jokes and the facts are our favorite ones to say. I just enjoy them because they're quick, they're fun, they're funny, 
And, you know, they're a lot of fun to do. So, so fun, of fun, course, fun. since it's Christmas, we figured we'd give you guys a gift by giving you double the presents. So my second one was, in the early 1900s, Christmas lights used to be so expensive, people actually used to rent them rather than buy them. And it was actually a way to show some kind of status. Bing Crosby's White Christmas is the highest grossing single of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All yeah. time. That's a Highest big... grossing single. Not highest grossing Christmas single. Highest grossing single of all time. It is the highest selling song of all time. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> that is definitely uh, kind of incredible considering... That it's technically only played around one time of the year, but it's every year consecutively. <clears throat> Do you want your song played all year round and then during Christmas time nobody really plays it? Or would you rather your song played never and then only on Christmas like Mariah Carey? Every year, like they say, it's like the resurrection of Mariah Carey at one yeah. point. She comes out of her ice mold. Well, uh, and- this is kind of a fun fact. It's not a part of my facts, but it's an extra little fact. Hey, I'm telling you, we got gifts for days. Paul McCartney's song, even though a lot of people, Beatle connoisseurs, mm-hmm. uh, don't really think that Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time was one of his better songs. Yeah. They actually a lot of think people... it's his worst Christmas song. And he grosses $400,000 a year. Wow. One song, Cadis. One. That's like a doctor's Bing Crosby, income. White Christmas. You know what I'm really starting to realize? It's the Christmas songs. It's the Christmas songs, man. Man, you make a Christmas next song. Next year, me and Cam look out, have, Look out for, for the next Christmas. We're going to have a Christmas album, bro. So this is my second fact. The term Merry Christmas wasn't always accepted because being merry used to signify slight intoxication. Yeah, so uh, eat, drink, and be merry. And get lit, basically, is what that meant back then. Yeah. Get lit like a Christmas tree, bitch. Merry, merry, merry. Merry Jane. Merry Christmas. All goes hand in hand. Like the Who's. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of corny jokes. Daddy, please don't. What do you call a snowman with a six pack? No idea. An abdominal snowman. (laughs) I want to get the second punch. What are ugly Christmas sweaters made out of? Fleece Navidad. (laughs) Okay, so here's mine. What do you call a kid who doesn't believe in Santa? I don't know. A rebel without a clause. (laughs) But how can you tell that Santa is real? I don't know how. You can always sense his presence. (laughs) You better watch out. (laughs) You better not cry. All right, so let's get into some Christmas music. Space Jam. So, I get that you have to listen to it a hundred times. That's Dude, all it is. We do everything else every day. You wake up every day. You brush your teeth every day. You shower every day. You fucking, you know, you think about the same things. You go to work every day. You can't listen to a couple Christmas songs every day for like a month. I get it when they started Dummy early. They'd be like right after Halloween. Everyone's like, have a holly No, jolly. that's annoying. No, no, yes. no. After Thanksgiving, there is room for Christmas songs and there is room for the ones that we play every year. That's where I'm going to lead into with my song, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. One of the best Christmas songs of all time. If you're going to put a Christmas song in the beginning of one of your movies, that's the Christmas song. Okay? You want everyone to go, I chose the right Christmas movie. That's the song you're going to put. It's good. It is. It's a very classic song. Oh, dude, you got the horns. (laughs) It definitely gives you that um, sentimental feeling when you hear voices singing let's be jolly shake the halls with bowels of holly is it shake the halls with bowels of holly bowels balls bowels like shit of holly i don't know 
We should just create a segment right now, just a Christmas segment, and it's about the Christmas terminologies, all right? We could have had like 13 words you've never heard for the Christmas season. Rudy Toot Toops and Rama Tum Tums? What is that? Explain that to me. They sound delicious. Did though. people used to, is Wait, wait, no, no, no. I thought they were toys that they were talking about. Of course, Yuletide. Everyone's trying to figure out what Yuletide means. But there is another one. Good tidings we bring. Mm. What is a tiding? What the fuck is figgy pudding? Why yeah, is that bro. the one that they want to repeat over and over? Yeah, dude. Why was that the one that made... Like, you know, it wasn't like they were saying like, oh, bring us some coquito. Oh, bring us some coquito. I would have been like, oh, this yeah. makes sense. Nobody likes freaking pudding. Oh, they didn't even say look, because there are things like fruitcake. Like, what really is fruitcake? Does anybody eat that? But they could have like put that in the song, because that's like a famous thing... That nobody really eats. Okay, oh, guess. bring us some fucking fruit cake. Oh, bring <laughs> us some fucking fruit cake. <laughs> and bring it right now. I'm not in the Christmas spirit. In sin, in sin and error pining. <laughs> I love how I just ripped the phone from the Wait, what? This one nah, says, and then we got upsot. It's like upset. Ups I'm upsot. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas Drake Round remix. yon virgin. What, what were we talking like that back then? Troll the ancient Yuletide Carol. Troll, Troll the, the They're giving us permission, guys. We have it in our Christmas songs I don't every year. Think, you know, it's funny. We hear them every year, and 80% of the songs, we don't know what the words are. They knew exactly what Yuletide was. And they were giving it. Or receiving it. <laughs> Speaking of music and oh, wow. all the weird. Jeez, we went into a rabbit hole there. Yeah. Let's talk about it. What's yeah. what's your Christmas song? I just said my Christmas really? song. That's how long we were in the rabbit hole. Rocking around the Christmas tree. <laughs> Damn, we rocked around that Christmas tree. <laughs> High as fuck. Mine is, I've had a very merry Christmas by Jerry Lewis. Oh. I've had a very merry Christmas. That is and that's that's good. Good. I thought you were gonna say, "Baby, please come home." <laughs> yeah, I curved it. <laughs> Who is that by? That's a good that's, song too. That's uh, shout out to that song too. Fuck. That's a fucking great song. But yeah, let me talk about the Jerry Lewis song while I'm at it. It's dope because Darlene it's Darlene Love. Shout out to Darlene Love and what's the song called? Baby, please come home. Baby, well, it's please called come Christmas. Home. They come on. They really tried to get away with that. They were like, no, you need a secondary title, hon. <laughs> so, yeah, I've Had a Very Merry Christmas by Jerry Lewis was dope because you got Jerry Lewis doing it. It's just so iconic. It's so fun to listen to his voice. He was really good on the mic, interesting enough. And he was a part of the Rat Pack, which makes sense. You know, he was chilling with motherfuckers like Frank Sinatra. So he saw the way they were doing it. He was like, these Don cigars, damn, much too strong. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's really fun to listen to. So... They must think I'm covered in noses. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Moving on <laughs> to the movies. I think they it's a wonderful life. Okay. Yes. And it truly is. It's a wonderful movie. There's really not much to say about it. Look, folks, if you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life, watch it this Christmas season. Watch it Christmas Day if you possibly can. Yes. It really is one of the best movies ever made. <clears throat> not the best Christmas movie ever made, the best movie. So watch it, okay? All right. Also about that movie, it's so fun to watch, again, like older films, you know, Jimmy Stewart and the way he acted, the way that they carried themselves back then. It's so fun to watch. And every year it's so exciting to see certain scenes. There was this dedication with acting back then that mm. you'll never find again the phone call scene. That's all I could say. The phone call scene. I'll just say that. Whoa. Oh, let's talk about the scene, the the rock tossing scene. Another <laughs> one. What about it? Is that what real? Yeah, okay. It was. I knew it. So when she picked up the rock and threw it, they were not expecting her to I hit. I knew the, it. The he window. even said he's like, "Wow, that was a great shot." <laughs> yeah. And that's why when you see it in the shot, you really see her hitting the I window. I knew it. The cinematic moments. Yes. Like that. That just. Really, are divine. Really, yeah. They capture the essence of the film. I mean, if you know what we're talking about, that scene is so important to the film. And that mm. moment, 
the moment was so important. Why she so throws good. the stone, what she says, yes. all of that. Oh, and they captured it on camera happening. There's another movie that's like that. Uh, and we could talk about it. It's kind of a Christmas movie. Uh, Alien. <laughs> Probably came out around like Christmas. No, but time. the same thing. You know about this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Homegirl yeah. throwing the basketball. Yes. Yeah. Like, In that shot, yeah. Dude. Like, she really one shot. shot. They were practicing the whole time. Mm. They weren't even preparing for that shit. They mm -hmm. were pre preparing to drop the basketball in another scene. Yeah, of course. Just drop it in the, the, the old class. They're like, all right, just get the shot out of the way. They just went, action, first shot. <sighs> like, come on. So much fun. God. I He's like, it. I love this movie, Alien. This <laughs> shot needs to be made. Definitely highly recommend that movie. It is not just the greatest Christmas movie, but one of the greatest movies of all time. Alien? So, mine is... I'm sorry, I peaked. <laughs> Trading Places! <laughs> I just watched it recently. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good. I yeah. Uh, you gotta, gotta watch it, like, pretty so, much every year. Trading Places... That movie came out in 1983. Wow. And it really shows the times. That's what I love about it. If you enjoy history and the way humankind shapes and shifts with time and the you know the things they say the things they don't say anymore <laughs> definitely highly recommend this film i would not say it's a film to watch with your kids i could also tell you though that it is a film that i watched as a kid you got eddie murphy you have dan Aykroyd. it's a very interesting duo but the way they mesh in that film if you don't know it's a movie about the upper class and the lower class literally trading places I'm not going to explain how that happens, but you just got to watch. Okay, so what in the world? What the what fuck is going on is out this? there? What the fucking world is going on This right Christmas. Now? All right, so you ready? Uh, am I going to do it? Sure, go ahead. I'll do mine because it's not that crazy. Idaho neighbor covers a boy in gift wrap for the Guinness Book of World Records. Look, it's cool like to end up in the Guinness Book of World Records for like random stuff like this. That's cool. You know, it's fun and stuff but i'll get into how it works so this was posted on december 20th of course i used upi again a pair of idaho neighbors captured a festive guinness world record when they covered an entire boy in gift wrap in one minute and 43 seconds david rush who has broken more than 200 guinness records wait what wow so he's broken 200 records it sounds to me like they hand out these fucking records like hotcakes that makes this like, even less impressive yeah they're like that's a record that's a record that's a record they, they need they, to you, put a cap on it you yeah. know like yo that's enough sweaters that you could put on that's it he got it so david who has broken more than 200 guinness records to promote stem education teamed up with neighbor lisa marie hannon to cover hannon's son joey in the wrapping paper the neighbors managed to finish their wrapping in 1 minute, 43 seconds, beating the previous record of 1 minute, 58.9 seconds, which was set by YouTube team Dude Perfect. Okay. So, right now, the first Christmas card ever is up for grabs, and apparently there's a little controversy behind this Christmas card. It actually features a family all in a picture, and they're putting their glasses up right mm -hmm. in the picture okay and in the picture shows kids and they're putting up uh, glasses oh and at the time that was like really risque that was like whoa um it's getting yo, fucked up on christmas yeah so they were like whoa this is a no-go and they actually so this is coming from newser.com this christmas card was dated from december 1843 and it said a merry christmas and a happy new year to you and it, again, features kids getting lit as fuck. <laughs> and so, with this being said, the guy, I guess the commissioner of Christmas cards, even though there was no commissioner of Christmas cards because Christmas cards didn't exist yet, he was like, this isn't going to happen. It says, the first commercially printed Christmas card is up for sale. It is being sold online by Marvin Getman, a Boston-based dealer in rare books and manuscripts. The card was designed by a painter and illustrator, John Calcott Horsley, at the suggestion of Sir Henry Cole, a British civil servant and inventor who founded the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Cole is widely credited with starting the tradition of sending holiday cards, a multi-million dollar industry today. 
only 1,000 copies of the hand-colored card were printed. And experts believe fewer than 30 have survived. So it's one of the first Christmas cards yeah, he, ever made. Yeah, he has a... I, I don't know if Getman has a few, but he has at least one out of said 30. So okay. the card is to believe to have gone on sale in the same week in December, around the time that Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol first was published the cards are expected to fetch upwards to ten thousand eight hundred dollars all i know is i was in the dollar tree yesterday and i was looking at christmas cards it's like five dollars 83 cents i'm like god damn i'm putting money in this card i might as well just give them another five dollars and be like listen i didn't get you a card because <laughs> go buy yourself a card or you get want. yourself a couple of cokes or something <laughs> Get a four for four. Yeah. Merry Christmas. All right, let's get into some creepies. You know what's what's funny about telling like scary stories on Christmas? Uh, is there a Christmas song that talks about it? There's something where yeah, yeah, there is. It's like telling scary stories, and I thought and by I was, the Chris or by the fire. Or yeah, 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 some shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought that was interesting because I was like, well, that's not a tradition in any household that I would know of. There are a lot of creepy things about Christmas, like the ghost of Christmas past and present and future. And then there's also... There's the also cat. the Yule Cat. Icelandic legend is that the Yule Cat takes children who don't receive clothes for Christmas. So you Or the Yule Cat will find you. <laughs> this was obviously a way for <laughs> parents because th- it has always been a thing that kids hate getting clothes yes. for Christmas. It's it, clearly it's always been a thing. So back in the in the day in Iceland, they would have to just be like, "The Yule Cat will kill you if you don't, don't enjoy your underwear." <laughs> He'll take you away, like you know, cat. A cat, the, bro, not how a big, cat. How big yeah, is come on, cat? bro. A, a Yule cat? You don't know what a Yule cat is? Do you know what a Yule tide is? That shit is like a it's tsunami. A, yeah, like because that's what I imagine Yule tides looking like. Apparently, it makes you gay. Yule tide gay cat that <laughs> swoops you away. <laughs> Where did the socks come from on your chimney? Probably to wear off the Yule cat. <laughs> the Yule cat. They're okay. just like, see, we have the socks, we have them. <laughs> Speaking of the chimney, this urban legend states that there was a man who just wanted to spend a beautiful Christmas evening with his family. But he also wanted to surprise them. So what he decided to do was say he was going on a business trip while his family had to spend Christmas alone. 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 <laughs> he ended up deciding, I am going to trick them by coming down the chimney, dressed as Santa Claus, and bring down the presents on Christmas because they think I'm away, but I'm home. I'll be <laughs> home for Christmas. So. oh, Runs over it. He does not fuck with Christmas spirit. The dad ends up going down the chimney on Christmas Eve and then getting stuck. And while he's stuck, he's begging for mercy. He's claustrophobic. He's you- claustrophobic. Ooh. Santa claustrophobic. <laughs> and he's breathing and breathing until he can't breathe no more. Probably breathing in the hot coal. And then... He dies. The family (laughs) thinks that he's gone on a trip still. So, Christmas night, they They light light the fire. fire. I knew it. You really are wondering what the chestnuts roasting by the fire (laughs) smells like. (laughs) So, yeah, watch out. Make sure you check your chimneys and make sure that Boppy isn't upset. Boppy, get out (laughs) of here. What are you doing? Nobody, kids don't even believe in Santa anymore. What are you doing? (laughs) Of course, now, uh, Gotta get into some feel good with some nostalgia. Do you remember Christmas shopping in school? It was like kind of like book day. You remember those days? Scholastic day. Yeah. Okay, but Christmas yeah. week 
That was great. Christmas week for school was just fuego. It mm-hmm. was just like fun, 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 fun all week. Mm-hmm. So in between that, they would just shove in. At one point, you'd just be having fun. And they'd be like, all right, you're going shopping. And they'd bring you into this little thing, kind of like the Scholastic bookstores. It was cool, you know, because it was my first real like time ever like shopping. Right. For Making somebody. a decision. I, yeah, yeah. You were like, like six, 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 seven. I said, yeah, yeah, six, six, six. <laughs> A lot of people say Santa is actually Satan. What do you call that? An anagram? Yeah. They, if you kind of flip his name around, it does that, right? But then they say Claus actually derives from the hoof claws. Krampus. <laughs> and then he wears red. And then eats your milk and cookies. Sounds like oh. something Satan would do. Yeah. What a dick. My nostalgic thing is trying to go to sleep for Christmas morning. Mm. That was a good one. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I yeah. missed that feeling. Man, man. it was like almost da- Oh my goodness. I almost Oh my goodness. Uh-oh. That's not good. We ruined the Christmas spirit. Oh, this is going to be easy. Give me. See, guys, this is actually magic. We're not using like some kind of weird magnetic force or something like that. Like that would be crazy. He's actually doing like some kind of santeria. Get it? Santa Ria. You know what it was, is I lost well, balance, therefore I must find it. I believe in myself. I believe in Christmas spirit. Right at the end, too. It's yeah. nostalgia. We only got one more segment. So I guess I'll just talk about it. Yeah, while I do this. Yeah, so trying to go to sleep on Christmas night was very invigorating. And one of the main... Like going, trying to go to Disney World. Well, you knew that you were being visited by a mythical creature. He wasn't a man, because a man cannot possibly fly through the sky every night. I believed night. he worked with God. Yeah. I need my help, too. The fuck was that? A few minutes later. So, we take our set very serious. So we just spent, what, like 15 minutes at least? 15 minutes? Oh, my God, that maybe, felt like almost an hour. Um, it felt like forever trying to figure this out this ended up overheating and it was doing uh, like this little sound we don't know if we captured it on the mics but it was going it was overheating it actually felt hot so we put it in the freezer and that fucking worked all right so let's fucking finish this show someone said How to see this christmas to me is as many people as possible happy damn that was tupac shakur who said that some very uh Profound shit. A good observation. Because it is. Everyone's so fucking happy. Christmas time is one of the best times to be alive, which is why anybody who hates on it is just a hater. You could be a bahum bug, sit in the corner, Mr. Scrooge, because we over here, we We celebrate Christmas. My quote is by Bob Phillips, who was an American journalist. There are three stages of a man. He believes in Santa Claus. He does not believe in Santa Claus. He is Santa Claus. And with that being said, folks, have a very, very merry Christmas. Mm. And happy holidays. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that sad. Santa's on his way He's looking
loaded lots of toys and goodies on a sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy To see if reindeer really know how to fly And so I'm offering this simple phrase Kiss from one to ninety-two Although it's been said Many times, many ways Merry Christmas to you Merry Christmas, everybody.